you're probably in flight training or you're private pilot and you kind of need a re little refresher and you're in your part where you're starting to learn about airspace which is where we fly in obviously duh but ever wonder what it's like flying in different types of airspaces the different rules and regulations for each that's what we're going to be going over today from a to g with a few other weird ones as well so welcome aboard captain ethan it's a beautiful day to fly airplanes and we're talking about airspace today so the first airspace we're going to talk about today is going to be class alpha airspace so class a airspace this is probably the airspace you're not going to be flying into for a while the vertical boundaries for the airspace is from 18,000 feet msl to flight level 600 what's above that we'll get that we'll get to that in a little bit what's above flight level 600 that's going to be later lateral boundaries it covers the entire united states and alaska unless otherwise noted i'm not sure if it's also international or what the rules are in canada or mexico or the united kingdom or all of europe or russia or i don't know the rules for that but in the united states class alpha takes up the entire united states there's no vfr operations allowed in class alpha you have to be on an IFR flight plan and have an ATC clearance to be able to enter Class Alpha airspace. That is mandatory. It does not matter if you're in a Cessna 172, which a 172 is not going to make it up to 18,000 feet. I'm sorry, but you guys are not getting Class Alpha. Maybe some gliders can, but I don't know. Well, well that that's different uh, equipment required you must have an ifr certified aircraft so if you guys are in your ifr training which you guys probably aren't but i am you must have a two-way radio mode c transponder and since january 1st of 2020 you must also have adsb out in class alpha airspace there's no cloud clearance requirement because it's all ifr and most general aviation pilots won't even be in this airspace it's majority going to be airline pilots or corporate pilots unless you're super rich and you're flying yourself in your own jet at 24,000 feet. The next airspace that we're going to be talking about is going to be the Bravo, the scary, the big, the boom. I don't I don't know why I said the boom. But the Bravo airspace is going to be from the surface up to about 10,000 feet MSL just about. Some airspaces it's different, um but it's custom designed and if if you guys want to know what it looks like, just imagine an upside down wedding cake and the Bravo airport being in the middle. There's not really a set like lateral boundary. So some Bravos look different than others. Like the JF, like the New York Bravo, there's literally three airports that make up the Bravo. Tampa was just the Tampa airport that makes up the Bravo. Atlanta, the Atlanta airport makes up the Bravo. Orlando, Orlando's weird because there's a Charlie within the Bravo as well. Same thing for Miami. There's a Charlie under the Bravo. Entry requirements, you must have an explicit ATC clearance to enter the Bravo. Doesn't matter if you're going to the Bravo airport or just transitioning through the Bravo. And you must have at least a private pilot certificate to enter in the Bravo. Now, before you guys say, Captain Ethan, student pilots can also go into the Bravo. Not without an endorsement, they can't. And I don't, I, I don't think I've ever met a flight instructor who's handed out a Bravo endorsement. If you guys have gotten a Bravo endorsement, leave a comment down below. I'm kind of interested to see how many of you guys have gotten a Bravo endorsement as a student pilot. Equipment that you need in class Bravo airspace is going to be a two-way radio, mode C transponder within 30 nautical miles, because there's usually a mode C veal, and ADS-B out within the mode C veal as well. So usually every Bravo has a mode C veal so they can see altitude, airspeed, and your position. I can make a whole nother video about transponders and later, later. comment that down below too. Cloud clearance requirement in the Bravo is going to be three miles visibility and clear of clouds. This is the one that's really not standard than the rest of them. So remember three statue miles visibility and clear of clouds. ATC is always gonna say your call sign and say you are cleared into the Bravo. If you don't hear those words, if you don't hear the words cleared into the Bravo, don't, don't even try to enter it, just don't. The next airspace we're gonna be talking about is class C airspace. This is primarily gonna be your regional airports, Maybe some international airports too are Bravos, but they're not going to be as big as like Atlanta or Miami. This is going to be like your Sarasota, your Fort Lauderdale, your 
Orlando Sanford, your Nashville, Tennessee, your Asheville, North Carolina. This that's going to be your Charlies. So the vertical boundaries is going to be the from the surface to 4,000 feet AGL. So that's usually the boundary. The lateral boundary, it's kind of it's different. It's it's different my airport, but there is because I know what's it called i know i know fort lauderdale sanford and asheville regional are all different but usually it's going to be from the core it's going to be a five nautical mile radius from the surface to 4,000 feet agl and the shelf is going to be a 10 nautical mile radius from 1200 feet agl to 4,000 feet agl you can kind of imagine this as well as an upside down wedding cake but like one circle and then another circle on top that's how i'd imagine it entry requirements you must establish two-way radio communications equipment you need a mode c transponder and adsb out if it's in the mode c field it, charlies are kind of weird because sometimes they can have their own different rules but their cloud clearance requirements in charlie is going to be three statute miles of visibility 500 feet below a thousand feet above and 2,000 feet horizontal this is where the 3152 comes in. This is one of the normal ones. So Bravo's three statue miles clear of clouds, Charlie's 3152. Let's talk about class D airspace. This is primarily gonna be your general aviation airports. This is gonna be some little tiny international airports too. So like St. Pete Clearwater, Albert Witted. Uh, what's another good Delta? McCollum Field, Orlando Executive. These are gonna be primarily your general aviation, private jet, maybe some international operations as well and the vertical boundary is from the surface to 2500 feet AGL usually sometimes it can look a little weird like Albert Witted we have two shelves for the Delta lateral boundaries is usually gonna be four nautical miles from the center of the airport sometimes it could be different usually it's four nautical miles so if you're 10 miles out you got about six miles until you break into delta entry requirements you just need to establish two-way radio communication usually you if if he tells you to stand by you're not really cleared into the delta you're not really cleared in the delta you're just not really allowed to go in it but he has to give you like an instruction i don't know why i'm saying he the tower has to give you instruction. Uh, cloud clearance requirement is going to be the same. It's going to also be your 3152. So three statute mile visibility, 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontal. And this is also where student pilots often solo. Because when I did my long solo cross country, I only went to Deltas. So I went to Ocala and Brooksville. They're both class Delta. So be sharp on radio comms if you're a student pilot. And also if you're a rusty private pilot, I need to work on my comms a little bit. I need to pick up flight following. That's what I need to do. And now let's get to the weird one, class Echo or class Ethan, you know, E, not funny. Anyways, the vertical boundaries, These, this is gonna be weird. This is gonna be a mouthful. In general, the class Echo starts at 1200 feet AGL but it can also start at 700 feet AGL or even at the surface in some other places. So if you guys look on a sectional chart, I'll put a picture up on screen. Around the Tampa Bravo, you can see this little magenta like ring. It's more like a gradient than an actual ring. That would mean that the class Echo starts at 700 feet and the next airspace that we're gonna be talking about is below it. Or sometimes the class Echo can start at the surface. So there's airports like Naples that has a magenta dashed line around. This could they have this because they're having a they ha they're having radar for the ILS coming in to runway five and two three right five and two three yeah the echo goes up to but not including eighteen thousand feet we got do you guys remember at the beginning of the video when i get when i said that the class alpha ends at flight level six zero zero eighteen thousand feet msl to flight level six zero zero what's above that we'll get that we'll get to that well the class echo starts back up above flight level 600 as well. Kind of crazy, right? So I guess in theory, you could do VFR on top at flight level 650 if you wanted. <laughs> Lateral boundaries, it, it's nationwide. So anywhere in the United States, it's going to be Echo. Anywhere I fly, I'm 95% in the Echo airspace. Entry requirements, there is no clearance requirement for VFR. You can fly through it freely, but there is an ATC clearance required for IFR operations. So you must be on an IFR flight plan if you're entering the class echo in IMC conditions. 
Equipment above 10,000 feet MSL, above 10,000 feet MSL, except below 2,500 feet AGL. That you need a mode C transponder with ADSB out, if I remember correctly. If I do or not, I'll put it up on screen. Thank you, editor Ethan, for you know the input. Okay, cloud clearance requirements. This is where it's gonna start getting a little weird, guys. It's gonna get a little weird. So below 10,000 feet, your cloud clearance requirements are still gonna be your 3152. So three statue miles of visibility, a thousand above, 500 below, and 2,000 horizontal. Above 10,000 feet, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be five statute miles visibility, a thousand feet below, a thousand feet above and one mile horizontal that's that's the weird one the 5111 so you got your 3152 and your 5111 basically anything above 10,000 feet is going to be 5111 and now on the last standard airspace class golf this is going to be your uncontrolled airspace ATC has no authority here. They can't do anything. You can do whatever you want in it, up to a certain limit until you're breaking aviation regulations. But it is uncontrolled airspace. It's from the surface to either 700 feet AGL or 1200 feet AGL as well. It used to be up to 14,500 feet MSL. There's some areas where I think it's still like that, but it's really, really rare to find that. But I think if you do, I think it's marked in a black gradient if i recall correctly if you guys know where a golf airspace is that does not start at 1200 feet agl comment that down below as well because i'm kind of interested to know lateral boundaries again the entire continental united states usually it's going to be your rural areas valleys and your uncontrolled airports there's no entry requirement in there there's nothing really legally required but you might still need a transponder or ADSB depending on the area that you are in. So like if you're within the mode C veal, you're still gonna need a mode C transponder. And here's where your cloud clearances get a little bit weird. So below 1200 feet AGL, during the day, it's gonna be one statute mile visibility and clear of clouds. At night, it's gonna be your 3152 rule. Above 1200 feet AGL, but below 10,000 feet MSL at during the day, it's gonna be one statute mile visibility. What? That can't be right. Ah, above 12, okay, no, it is right. I'm just an idiot. So above 1200 feet AGL, but below 10,000 feet MSL, which is gonna be your weird little area. It's gonna be a mile visibility, a cloud clearance of 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal. At night, that's just gonna be three statute miles and the same thing. And then above 10,000 feet MSL and golf airspace, which is non-existent anymore, it's gonna be five statute miles visibility, a thousand above, a thousand below, and a mile horizontal from clouds. Again, if you guys know of an area where they have a weird class golf, let me know, because I really wanna study it and check it out. You guys thought this video was over, huh? No, it's not. Now we also have special use airspace. So we have MOAs, restricted, prohibited, warning areas, TFR, military training routes, and national security areas. I'm not really gonna get into all of them, except TFRs, MOAs, restricted, and prohibited. So a TFR is the temporary flight restriction. Basically, you need permission from the controlling agency in order to fly through that airspace. It's only gonna be temporary, so this is primarily used for like if there's VIP, if there's a sporting event, Disney World as well. That's also a really major TFR. That, that's gonna be your TFRs. They're a set time for an event. Your MOAs are gonna be military operations area. You can fly through these. You do not need permission from the controlling agency, but it's a good idea to check if they're hot or not, because if they are, that might be a bad day for you and you might make some military friends. Let's talk about the restricted area. The restricted area, you do need permission from the controlling agency in order to fly through the restricted area. You shouldn't ever fly through a restricted area ever. It's not a good idea to. I personally wouldn't, but you can, in theory, fly through one. Now let's talk about a prohibited area. This is this is a no-no area. This, this area is where you're not allowed to fly through at all, and you can't even get a clearance from the controlling agency to fly through it. Primarily gonna be for like, you know, the White House. That, that's really the only prohibited area I could think of is the White House area. But yeah, that's really about it for this video. If you guys learned something, which you guys should have learned something, which primarily a lot of airspace under 10,000 feet MSL is gonna be your 3152 rule and above is gonna be your 5111 rule, except in Bravo. Also, you need Bravo, you need a specific clearance to enter the Bravo. 
and yeah that's really about it you guys you, you guys should all know this now by watching this video if you guys learned something make sure you guys leave a comment and a like down below make sure you guys are subscribed if you guys are new to the channel and make sure you guys hit the bell notifications because apparently only 50 people have hit the bell so make sure you guys go click the bell notifications so you guys are notified every time that i upload and yeah we'll see you guys in another video